Well, thank you everyone for coming out to hear us talk. Um, it's really exciting for us to be seniors and, and just reflect on this entire experience to talk about our experience in the pilot program. And it kind of gave us goosebumps a little bit to stand here as seniors thinking about what it was like in our first ECG class um, in the pilot group. So what we were saying is if someone had recorded us this time, 40 years ago, <laughs> when we were in high school, and said, what are your values? What, what, is, what means a lot to you in life? And someone had recorded me. I, I wish someone had recorded me then. And then ask us the same question now, and record us now, because I have no idea what I would say my values were back in high school. And it's funny because when you're in high school, you know, you kind of go along with everything you've been told from your parents and all of your teachers and your coaches. And, and so nothing is really um, unique to your own experience. It's kind of just what you've been raised to believe. And I think now, standing here as seniors, our values um, as a result of being in this pilot program are our own, unique to our own experience and the own decisions that we've made over these four years. And this great environment um, of social justice at Cabrini College has I think really made us mature, aware citizens. And so we're hoping that we can share kind of how we got to this point through our journey. Um, and so we'd like to start by talking about how we were a part of the pilot program, ECG. Uh, so when we first got our schedules freshman year, we see these letters ECG, our interdependent world, and I was like, what's, what's this? And my dad was like, oh, it's probably just a history class. I was like, oh, okay. no big deal. And so on our first day of class, and we always share this story, our class was with Jerry Zurich. Alyssa and I were together in that class, and he said, who in here is willing to take their shirt off? And we're thinking, to guys. What's happening? <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, where am I? And, um, and basically the exercise was pretty much for us to just turn our shirts around and look at the tags and see where the materials were made that went into our clothes. And to talk about where the materials from our cell phones were from and the materials that went into our cars that drove us to campus that day. And the idea that every single thing that we do and are able to do is a result of our interconnectedness in this world. So that was ECG 100. And as we talk about all these levels, 100, 200, 300, and we'll talk about the new 400 ECG class, we kind of label them uh, in our own way. So we say ECG 100 captured our minds. So we come to college. We don't really have a worldly view. Maybe we took a world history, you know, our sophomore year in high school, but it's not much, you know, of our interest. And here we are in Dr. Zurich's class, and he's asking us to think about health care as a human right and not a privilege. And I'm like, what do you mean? If you have a toothache, you can't just go to the dentist? Not everyone has dental health care? <laughs> and so we discovered um, certain characters that we met through books that we were required to read throughout the course. We read um, a story about Paul Farmer, who has dedicated his work as a Harvard a graduate who's a doctor to make healthcare a human right in Haiti. Uh, we learned the story of Enrique, who traveled here atop a freight train to come all the way to the United States to search for his mother. Uh, we learned about uh, Paul Resuscitabagina, who um, is from Hotel Rwanda, that movie that I'm sure some of you are familiar with, and learned about a genocide that I could not believe I did not know about. I could not believe that I spent four years learning about an extremely important genocide known as the Holocaust, yet I didn't know about a genocide that occurred during my own lifetime. I was upset that I hadn't learned about this before, but I felt that there was a sense of, of calling. There was a reason why we were in this class and we had this opportunity. As privileged young Americans getting to be in a class that is allowing us to not only learn about this and hear from our professor, but to have a round table discussion with our own peers and bounce off of each other and say, why is this happening in the world? And what can we do about it? So then transitioning to sophomore year, ECG 200, which we call HANDS. And so this was an opportunity for us to get out there and really try to get our hands involved in, in this service component of everything. And so 
our particular class was split up. Half of our class went to Nationality um, Service Center and worked with refugees from all around the world, mostly with young children, uh, kind of tutoring them and their ABCs and getting them acclimated to the United States. Uh, and Alyssa and I went to Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, which is the mushroom capital of the world, and we worked with Mexican migrant workers. Prior to this, as I was saying earlier in our discussion, Alyssa and I are from South Jersey, you know, farmland USA. So we had heard the words Mexican, migrant, Mexican farmer before, but mostly nothing positive followed that. Um, so this was an opportunity for us to kind of abandon what we may have been told as far as stigmas and maybe things our parents may have discussed at the dinner table and have a chance to think on our own what we think about the current immigration uh, issues in the United States. And to be 19 years old to talk about this kind of stuff, it, it was just, it was kind of um, extremely empowering knowing that we had the opportunity and the atmosphere and the climate was right for us to talk about things that mattered so much. Um, and so if Alyssa wants to talk about now the 300 and 400. Sure. Um, so coming into our junior year, Kelsey and I were getting, starting to get involved in the communication department, getting leadership roles in the loquitur, working on the executive staff of the radio station, and we were entering into ECJ, and this year was hard. We opened our hearts to these issues. We had been learning about all these things across the world, and I will say, in all honesty, at the time, you're learning about so many issues, and it can be very overwhelming, and I think it is for a lot of people. You're hearing about something in Africa, in Haiti, in the Middle East, and it's like, how can I really help everyone? I'm just one person living in the United States. I can't be everywhere at one time. So in this course, um, Dr. Zurich really encouraged us to kind of focus in on one issue that we started to feel connected to that we really thought made everything make sense to us. And for Kelsey, she had started to focus in on human trafficking domestically and internationally, and I began focusing in on the current conflict in the Congo. Um, you've probably heard of blood diamonds. It's similar to that with um, the minerals that we use in all of our electronics. So in ECG, we began getting real in-depth with these issues, not just scratching the surface of these problems. We started looking at systemic issues and gaining a global perspective on how everything really is interconnected. And it kind of pulled ECG 100 and 200 together for us. At this time, I think we had an aha moment as communication majors and working towards social justice. We realized we're communicators. We have a voice and we can use this voice for the people who don't have a voice. And that's when we began crossing over ECG into our major and producing pieces about human trafficking or lost boys of Sudan or the conflict minerals and began producing pieces that were front page articles one of mine I transformed into a 25-minute audio documentary, and many of these pieces that Kelsey and I had worked on actually went on to win national awards, which was very rewarding. Although it was rewarding, it showed us that pieces like this draw attention because they're things that people don't know about. So we were calling attention to these issues that no one had heard about before. And we realized, as journalists, it's our responsibility to bring attention to these. And we started to see that connection between our major and between the social justice curriculum, which was definitely, I think, a turning point for us. Um, ECG 400, which has not yet really been established among other majors, is a capstone that we did that was unique to our major. And actually, Kathy Lindman has led it let us through it, we will be presenting tomorrow, which is very exciting. And it was a year-long project that some fellow communication majors, Kelsey and myself, worked on called Youth Voices Rise, and it documents the social change in the Arab world, which I will get into later in my presentation. But um, it really, it was the capstone. It let us use our social justice minor, which we have, the ECG courses, and our major to, like, to produce something that was very unique and meaningful to what we're doing. The one thing that I truly feel in this curriculum is tailoring it to each and every individual. 
you can't just say you're doing social justice and make someone go through three courses without showing them how it's beneficial to them. And I think that that is what is important. I think that we found it to be beneficial because we realized that we could use our skills as communication majors for the common good, and that's what made it really click for us that I can write, I can produce audio pieces, video pieces, and while I'm doing this, I can use what I've learned in social justice for the common good to spread awareness. And I definitely think that it hasn't been highlighted enough in each major <coughs> that there's something for everyone. Like I had said in my presentation that if you're in communication, you can make a multimedia website about the Arab Spring. If you are in biology, you can talk about the environmental issues. If you're in account accounting or finance, you can look at microfinancing and work with stuff like that. There is something for everyone, and I think that that's sometimes something that people miss. They think it's just social justice. And it's not just social justice, it's incorporating it into your life, as I said before. So I think that that's definitely something that would help students and to I kind of... So Kelsey's going to go on to talk about the minor. So basically, we went through this whole process. And Alyssa and I made a conscious decision because we felt like our hearts were compelled to this call to social justice, if you will. And we discovered there was an opportunity to minor in social justice. Um, and you know, we had a great concentration on it throughout ECG, but we decided we have two years left, we're juniors, and there's a lot more that we can still uh, learn about regarding social justice. So we declared the minor. Um, so the minor is 18 requirements, and I won't go into detail about every single class that we took, but I'd like to highlight some of them. Um, so Faith and Justice was a course where we really had an open dialogue of what faith is. And I think that before, I think I, I thought faith kind of crossed over and that faith meant religion. But I think I learned that faith is what motivates people and made me think, what motivated me to want to declare this minor? What motivated me to want to come to college? What motivates me to do anything that I do? What motivated people to drive an airplane to, into the, the Twin Towers? So to really have an understanding of how our world is operating and why there's good people in the world, and why there's bad people in the world, and why there is justice and there is injustice. So it really helped me to kind of understand why things were the way they were. Um, my, my heart was very much in it, um, but I needed to go a little bit deeper. We also visited the Cabrini Sisters um, in New York, which was an amazing experience. Um, I think that, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, um, sometimes I think when we're talking about the Justice Matters curriculum, I don't think it's boldly stated enough that this is Cabrini College, where the mission is to serve you know, the poor and vulnerable and all these different ministries, and, and we're called as students to be a part of that mission. Um, so learning about the issue of immigration and then seeing what our very own Cabrini sisters are doing to bring justice to that was absolutely inspiring. Um, I've had a great experience of being able to travel abroad twice while I was here, once to Guatemala and once to Ecuador. When I went to Guatemala, I was a sophomore, and when I came back, Dr. Zurich had asked us to present at the symposium. He said, Kelsey, can you present on integral human development according to Catholic social teachings? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> um, and so, you know, I kind of did um, my, my homework a little bit. And by sticking to the morals of Catholic social teaching of the dignity of every human life. Such a simple concept that yet is so challenging to promote sometimes. Um, so taking this class um, helped me to pull from that experience as a sophomore. And also, when I was a senior this year, I went to Ecuador, the theme of that carried throughout. Uh, the theme of the week in Ecuador was equal souls. I don't think I would have really understood that meaning before. Um, maybe as a sophomore or a junior, but being a senior and having all this come full circle with the, with the minor um, w was incredible. Just realizing that every single person, um, no matter what they look like, no matter what their background, um, we're, all, we're all equal deep down. We're all part of this, you know, one human family. So I briefly talked about during the ECG 300 working within our major, but this point is very crucial to making sure that this curriculum works and is successful. Unless you connect social justice and justice matters to a student's major, 
they're going to dismiss it as just part of the core another class and that's not what we want we want them to have a well-rounded education that's unique to Cabrini and as Kelsey said we are a Catholic college and we need to hold true to our principles and if a student does not feel that this is what that they want to do or if this is the fit then we can encourage them that you're getting a well-rounded education but we need to really hold on to what we firmly believe and I had said to Kelsey and a couple other people in our speech this morning that I came to Cabrini as a communication major thinking I wanted to be a fashion writer working in New York for Elle magazine or Vogue and now I find myself as graduation is quickly approaching and I'm looking for a job I want to say just looking for something more meaningful I have no interest in applying to Elle magazine anymore I can honestly say it's not one of my goals but not that I frown upon anyone who wants to do that, but this current film has definitely showed me that there's more out there, and it has definitely opened my eyes to another world. I think that Kelsey and I were very fortunate in our experience. We had Dr. Zerk, who was in charge of our department as communication majors for the three years, which, which helped cater our ECG courses to communication, which is very important. I feel that unless a student feels connected, it's not going to stick. And Kelsey and I really felt connected that we could make a difference through communication, through working for Loquitur, WIBF, anchoring for location, reporting on news that was important. Not that campus safety and campus parking are not very important <laughs> issues that we all are worried about, but issues like human trafficking and conflict minerals and what's going on in the Middle East really grab the attention of people and they really make it's like a, it's a great feeling for us knowing that we're reporting on something with substance something that is making a difference and that is sh like it's teaching people people that never would have had any idea about these situations are learning because we're using our skills in our field to spread the word um, we had the chance as communication majors to basically do an ECG 400, and most of them have stopped at an ECG 300. And this is our capstone course that we worked on with a field, with a team of our majors in our field. And um, we worked on a website, as I said, called Youth. I'm like forgetting what I'm saying. Youth Voices Rise, and it documents the social change in the Middle East. And these stories were the stories of youth our age in other countries across the world. And we were able to share them with people here that may have not heard these stories through this multimedia website. And Kelsey and I had said earlier, we did videos for this, we did articles, we did graphics, and our teacher is sitting here and she knows it was hard. It's been a long time coming this year, but no one said that college was supposed to be easy and you have to challenge yourself. And if you're gonna put so much time and so much effort into something, why not make it something that's gonna make a good change, is the way I feel. So with that being said, I just wanna say that understanding what is important in the world is something that everyone needs to know about. It's, if you're getting an education and you want to be an educated person, you cannot go into the world not knowing about the current events and the current issues that are going on. And that is basically what the Justice Matters curriculum is doing. It is informing students of what's going on around us. We say that history is important. This is like a future history class. This is what you're going out into the world and going to have to deal with. And there's nothing more important than that, I feel. I gave this example of how I feel that I have changed in the four years due to the Justice Matters curriculum, and I told Dr. Rademacher and Dr. Zarek this, but recently we had a lottery that was $640 million going off, and my freshman year, I probably would have been like, oh my god, this would change my life. I could buy like five new cars with this and go on a shopping spree, and that would be great. And I mean, it's what I would have said. But my dad was sitting with me, and he goes, what would you do with $640 million? And I turned to him and I said, I find it very disturbing that we have $640 million laying around to give away to people when we have people all over the world, and even in this country, starving. Like, what are, what are we doing? This does not make sense. 
we really, really need to just rethink what we're doing with $640 million. We're making cuts everywhere to people who need this money to pull themselves out of poverty and start a better life, yet we're giving it away to someone who probably really doesn't even need it. My dad turned to me and goes, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, me neither. <laughs> I probably would have said that four years ago. But that's just an example of the transformation that I can see in myself over the past four years. So Kelsey and I are at a new point now in this justice journey, as I like to call it. And school is ending, but we don't think that that's where your education should end. Just because we've had four years of teachers kind of coaching us along and helping us down the right path and seeing all of this, it's not where it should end. And right now, Kelsey and I, with graduation lurking around the corner, are still on the job hunt, and we are searching for work that is more meaningful, that where we can use our skills for the common good. And that's what we want for every student that is in this Justice Matters curriculum. We don't want them to feel that just because they've taken these courses that these were just a series of courses that I had to take. There's something for everyone. So within this curriculum, we want people to have that feeling that I can move on with this. This is not the end, and I can go forward. It's not just a class. It's a lifestyle, basically. And that's our goal. Um, and I just think that what I was saying to Dr. Gingrich was, I think if you had every student before they graduate, they, in one sentence, what does social justice mean? Not to you, but what's the definition of social justice? I don't think everyone has the same sentence. I'm not sure everyone should have the same sentence, but I think that's why some people might have different experiences than others, because not everyone has that same definition of what it is. I don't know if that is because some people are more inspired than others or whatever, but I think a more consistent definition of the word and a consistent goal. So the, this was your goal for us, and I hope we met it, um, but what is the goal of um, other ECG professors um, or Dr. Rademacher as the advisor for the social justice minor? Everyone to have the same language for that, I think is important. I think also in the now too, is that this, this whole going back to, to values thing. I mean, Alyssa and I, you know, hopefully someday are going to be wives and mothers and things like that. And this is all going to play a role in, in what kind of people we want to bring into this world and what kind of people we want to be contributing to society. And I think, you know, there's a chance that we might not have a job that directly relates to the common good, but if we're, if we're conscious of it, we buy fair trade bananas. And if, you know, we make sure our kids are doing the right thing, just these little quiet ways of making sure that the theme of social justice is carried out through the rest of our lives. It doesn't have to be in the loudest way possible, but I really feel like this is really eating at the core of us now because we've gone all the way the four years and that this decided to declare the minor and everything like that. So um, well, we were asked earlier when we spoke to the staff, um, Jean Saltis from admissions <clears throat> was asking, you know, we, we kind of are trying to find a way to get more people, you know, interested in this from the get-go. Um, and I think it's really important that in marketing the school um, and on the website, and, and there, the, Alyssa and I are sitting up here as, as testimonies to our own experience as communication majors, but there's business majors and there's bio, bio, biology majors and all these different types of people, Cabrini, who also have been touched in different ways. Um, you know, our stories are as unique as everyone else's here, and I think it's so important to capture that and to have that as a huge presence whenever anyone searches Cabrini. And I think it's just as important for them when they come on campus as prospective students and families that they feel that right away. They feel the spirit of Cabrini in just their one hour tour. Um, and that, as I said, I, I don't think, and I'm not saying it necessarily is, but I don't think it should be brushed under the rug and that maybe um, a certain type of dialogue needs to be created that each ambassador shares with prospective students on the tour, that this is exactly what Cabrini College is, that when you come here, regardless of whether you know, you're Catholic or not, or you're interested in going to Ecuador or Guatemala, there will be a component of Catholic principles. I also just want to say, as a side note, stepping out of the term social justice for a second that we put on it, 
I look at myself before I came to Cabrini, and I don't know what the future holds for me. I don't know if I'm going to find a job working for Catholic Relief Services. I don't know where I'm going to end up even a month from now at this point in time. But I do know that even if I don't find a job in social justice and I'm working just an everyday job, which I hope that that's not the case, that I have these values. I feel like if I looked at myself at 18 versus now 22, I was like this. I had blinders on, tunnel vision, mm -hmm. straightforward into this like materialistic type of world that we live in. And we all get caught up in things. I've talked to Dr. Rademacher about this. I'm writing a story about conflict minerals and cell phones and I'm purchasing an iPhone myself. You're not gonna escape it. But I am so thankful that I followed through with this. Like I, I truly am, and I say that from the bottom of my heart because I definitely think that it has changed my view of the world. And I think that if I hadn't done this, I would be scared going out into the world right now. I don't think anyone should go out into the world not knowing what they're going into. And I think that that, beyond all of the courses and the curriculum, that is the most important thing, that we are giving students real life knowledge and valuable ethical morals to do what's right. And that's what we need, we need in this world, is people that are ethical and moral and doing things that are right. And I am just so thankful that this really clicked for me because I definitely see a change in myself and I know my parents can even see it. I mean, I know the way I was when I was 18 and coming in. She's and much easier to be around now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's great. Okay, uh, it's true. No, I'm kidding. But um, I just, I'm very thankful that I did this. I definitely think it has made me an overall better person and I wouldn't change a single thing that I've done. If anything, I wish I did more. So that's what I have to say about it. And then for the, the future of Cabrini, um, I can't, I, I know I might be biased just because obviously we're up here raving and ranting about how awesome the Justice Miners curriculum is, but it is so mutually beneficial. For us to sit up here and kind of toot our own horns and say that we have national prizes is one thing, but the, the kind of work that we won prizes for, I mean, it, it's just so fantastic that we were able to produce work like that. Um, and I just, I think it's so wonderful for the school um, for us to be able to share with you what you have tried to provide us as students, but what we've been given as a result of this educational environment of the heart and mind, it, is a, it's amazing and it's so rewarding. And it's just incredible to, to stand up here as seniors and to think that we've made it this far and we're still connected to it. And, the way we're able to talk about it, um, we were telling this to Dr. Gingrich earlier when we were walking over, and we, when we were freshmen and sophomores, and maybe even juniors, we know we, we had this feeling that we really felt committed and called to this, but we couldn't really articulate it that well. And it was because Alyssa and I kind of put ourselves in that little uncomfortable zone of just going the extra stretch, interviewing a lost boy of Sudan, interviewing um, you know, someone who is a rape victim in the Congo, putting ourselves in all those situations have been so outstandingly rewarding because we've said yes to all the opportunities that we've been provided with here. Um, so I just can't say enough about this being mutually beneficial. But what I wish for the future of Cabrini is that you don't have two social justice minors. You don't have two students up here getting goosebumps talking about their experience. It should be, you know, going viral at the school, and people should be just soaking up these resources to get involved in this. People should be so connected to the spirit of Cabrini from the get-go, before they even come here. What I hope for the future of Cabrini is that everyone who comes to Cabrini is made fully aware of the values and the mission that we stand on, that we are a college of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini who is dedicated to the poor and vulnerable, and that you don't have to be Catholic, no. You don't even necessarily have to be religious. But a word that I learned from working with the missionary sisters is this word, disponibilita, which is an Italian word that has my little accent, um, means to be open and willing to be sent. And Alyssa and I have been open and willing to go out there and put ourselves in that uncomfortable position, and it's totally, totally paid off for us. And so what I hope is that that's not swept under the rug when people are coming here that we're not highlighting um, our basketball team necessarily over the mission of Cabrini, and that they're equally represented. 
and that people want to come to Cabrini because of the mission. Not later figure out, like, oh, I'm a part of this great school with this great mission. Like, you know, that happened to me, and I'm fine with that. But we want people rec being recruited and saying, I want to go to that school because that's the mission that they stand on. And I'm so proud to be a Cabrinian, and I... Um, <laughs> 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 What's happening? <laughs> I just feel very connected to the whole mission of the school, and I just so weird that I'm a senior, and that... <laughs> I just want everyone to experience this. I mean, get four years to do these incredible things. That's it, four years. And I just feel as though I've been totally uh, able to do everything and more that I wanted to do thanks to the curriculum. So that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> want to go out there. I want, I want that video clip on the Cabrini <laughs> website. we got to get more testimonials like this for students because this change has just, it's turned you into citizens of the world. And I know when you go out after graduation, it doesn't matter what job you get, you are going to be great representatives of Cabrini College of Women's Thank you very much. Thank you.